Welcome, my beloved friends, to Through the Bible, Brother David, third Sunday of June. And I'm telling you, it's chilly out here this morning. Uh, usually by this time of the year, we have hot, humid weather, uh, usually. It was chilly through May, and here we are in the month of June. And it's, uh, it's got me wishing I had a little jacket on this morning. But so, unlike most months of June that we have in South Carolina, we used to have hot, humid weather by now. And uh, on, usually all of June is hot and humid. July just like that, and so is August usually. Well, we're thankful for a little reprieve from that, and a little, uh, a little uh, break from it, may I say. And so on. Uh, as we get into the scriptures this morning, we are thankful for each one of you that you have uh, joined us, and we're, we're thankful that uh, you would uh, turn into this video, and uh, and I appreciate those of you who make the good comments. I appreciate the bad ones too, and uh, I'm, I'm glad for people that listen, whether they like it or whether they don't. I'm just thankful they listen and watch. Perhaps they shall hear something that will help them in their walk with God. And in many cases, may it help some to recover themselves from some erroneous teachings that they have heard, wrongly heard. My friends, we're in Exodus 32 today, Let's look on down to verse 15. Uh, Moses turned and went down and went down from from the mount. He went down the mount, and the two tables of testimony were in his hand. The tables were written on both sides, the one side and on the other, but, but they were written. And the tables were the work of God. And the and the and and the writings was the writing of God, graven upon the tablets. What about that? God Almighty made these stones. God Almighty wrote upon them. And I think he wrote those basic Ten Commandments upon them. And, uh, and there are other commandments given in the Bible, but these are the basic ones I think God gave to Moses upon the mount. And, uh, and and most carried him back down. It's very interesting when we think about that. Uh, here it is, the law, 1,500 years approximately before the time of Christ. God Almighty gave the law unto Moses. There are great reasons for the law to be given to mankind, as we know from the scriptures. The law is our schoolmaster, uh, pointing us on to God, pointing us on uh, to our faith in the Lord to the day that Jesus Christ would come. And so we are very thankful for the law and the schoolmaster to teach this world the severity and the wrath of Almighty God. As we learn from the New Testament, the law had its place. The law had its reason. And the law uh, brought death. Now as we read the next few verses, we're going to see what happens to these two tablets of stone. And we're going to see what was about to happen to the children of Israel. We know what was about to happen to them. God was about to kill them all, save for Moses. And I also thank for, jo for Joshua, because the Bible says in the next verse, that when Joshua had heard the noise uh, of the people sh of the people shouting, he said to Moses, there's a noise of war in the camp. What about that? I'm thankful that Joshua was with Moses. I'm so thankful for that. And that he found favor with God. I was to be the next leader of the people of Israel because he was a faithful man. We appreciate the man Joshua and the man Caleb. I don't think Joshua would have died had the Lord smoked the rest of them. And I'd like to think that Caleb would not have either. But I think basically, though, the Lord meant what he said, I'll make a new nation out of thee, Moses. So perhaps he did intend to take them out as well. We're not really sure about that. We know one thing. We're thankful that Joshua was with, was with Moses. And Moses said, It is not the voice of them that shout for mastery, uh, neither is it the voice of them that cry for being overcome, but the noise of them that sing, do I hear? 
all about that. Edison, as Edison, and it came to pass as soon as he came down into the camp, they saw the calf and they danced him. And Moses' anchor waxed hot, and he cast the tables out of his hands and break them beneath the mount. What about that? Can you imagine taking something that God had made and throwing it down and breaking that? That's exactly what Moses did. His anchor waxed hot against the children of Israel. Oh, my friends, I don't think it was a matter of not wanting what God had gave. I think it was a matter uh, not of just Moses' anger, not at all. His anger was greatly directed toward the children of Israel. But I think had he not done so, I think that God's wrath would have poured out upon the children of Israel. Had Moses carried that law into the midst of them, I think they would have died. I think Moses knew that. I think that's why. He threw it upon the ground and break them. Oh, what would anybody give today to have those tables written by the hand of God? I, I, it might be that anybody would die and had them close to them, perhaps. Because no, we've all sinned. We've all broken the law of God at one point or the other. But, uh, but Moses threw them down. I think because it was good for the children of Israel he did so. Had he not done so, I think that they would have died as they looked upon that. We know that the Philistines, when they opened it up, the Ark of the Covenant had the law within it. If they died, I think the same thing would have happened to the children of Israel had Moses just carried those on. Well, Let's read what else Moses did do. And he took the calf which they had made and burnt in the fire and ground it to powder and started it upon, all the, upon the water and made the children of Israel drink of it. What about that? I and mean, Brother Moses getting serious about this and said to Moses and Aaron, What did this people unto thee that thou hast brought so great a sin upon them? But notice this, Aaron doesn't tell the story of this matter right here. Aaron is just as guilty as any one of these people. Now notice what he says. And Aaron said, Let not the anchor of my Lord wax hot. Uh, now notice, the people that they are set on mischief, they said to me, Make us gods which go before us. At, uh, for uh, as this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt when the law was to become of him. Well, to that point, Aaron had told the truth. But now, let's read on a bit more here in verse 24. And I said to them, Then so ever happy and go, let him break it off. So they gave it me, and I cast it into the fire. So I came out in this calf. Well, what about that? Uh, Aaron goes, Gets a little loose with the truth here, doesn't he? Moses' brother. He saw I just threw the gold in the fire. Now came this calf. No, they made that calf. We could flip back a page or two and read how they made that calf. Most of that calf, Aaron did. And so adultery uh, was hit upon this people deeply and greatly. And uh, we're not to be adulterers, the Bible tells us. In the New Testament, like the children of Israel, who commit adultery, and they and they and they sit down to eat and drink, and to rise up to play before these this false god that they had made, and worship that god. Could this be the god that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, my dear friends? Uh, and and when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked to their shame among the enemy. What about that? Here they were, naked, eating and drinking, rising up to dance and to play. What a shameful thing. What a shameful, shameful situation that I had, these people had dropped into. 
in such a terrible hurry. My dear friends, uh, I want you to know some of our churches today, so-called, have dropped to a very pitiful shame with their lack of standards, their lack of respect, their lack of clothing, the lack of decency in the house of God, uh, they have dropped to great lows in our day. Their music has become worldly and ungodly in some cases. And it's become very shameful that which they are, which they do. Walk into church and flip flop, t shirts and halter tops. Why shame? <coughs> Come into the house of the Lord, half dressed. Uh, this should never be. They have dropped to new low in our day and time. And the message they preach is that I feel good. God loves you. What about that? And my dear friends, there's a whole other side to God and the fact that He is a God of love. He's also a God of wrath, a God of fire, a God of judgment. And uh, these people should have been clothed. You notice the high priest, he just got through studying about their garments, how that they were to be clothed when they went uh, into the tabernacle. And I think that anybody who went in there should be clothed properly and bring any uh, sacrifice up to God's house. And we're told in the New Testament, we're the temple of the Holy Ghost of God that dwells within us. And that we should live and live clean and proper before the Lord God. I think we also should keep ourselves properly clothed before the Lord. And especially when we go in to the house of God, we should keep ourselves properly clothed. And... Uh, the bunch today will strip the clothes off and go in the house of God anyway. I think that's a shame to do that. I think it's a great lack of respect that they show for God. I think it's just akin to what the children of Israel were doing, dancing around naked before a golden calf. And my friends, uh, we don't worship idols. We know the Lord. We don't dance around them. We don't do such things. I have no idols in my house. No idols in my garage. Uh, none hang on my walls anymore. I worship nothing uh, that's here. I thank God for my house I have to live in. The vehicles that we have to drive. The bed and the furniture that we lie upon, sit upon. The table at which I eat. The kitchen at which we cook. All oh, my friends, we worship none of those things. I will worship the true and the living God. We go to our church in a little while. There'll be no idol hanging on the wall there. There'll be no crucifix even. And probably not even a cross hanging there. Because we make no graven image unto the Lord. We worship Him in spirit and in truth. And so should the children of Israel have done this very thing. Um, and let's read on right here. And then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together to him. He said to them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Put ye every man his, his sword by his side throughout the camp. And I guess and slay every man his brother, every man his companion, every man his neighbor. And the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses. And there fell of the people that day about 3,000 men. What about that? It was a time of death for these people. And Moses called for the Levites to come and to put their sword upon and to go among them. And they did so. And they died that day. 3,000 men. What about that? Well, I'm telling you, it was a time of death for the children of Israel. And uh, Moses is making a time of life at this time. My dear friends, the law brings forth death. 
that grace and truth comes by Jesus Christ. Call upon him today while you can. This rock is Jesus. Yes, he is.